Chapter 21 The Curse of Canaan Genesis 9, 18-29 And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, and Ham, and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years. And all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. Genesis 9, 18-29 Verses 18 and 19 are almost an introduction to Noah and his sons. Because there is now a different world, we are reminded of the men who peopled it. They are survivors of the old world, and they carry its genetic tint, original sin, the will to be one's own god. The focus of this text is not on Noah's drunkenness. Too many commentators and preachers centre their attention on that fact rather than on Ham's attitude. Taking the fact of Noah's drunkenness at its worst, it is indicative of people's standards that a son's contempt for his father is seen as less serious than a man's intoxicated condition. A man's single episode of drunkenness affects his life for part of a day, The contempt for a parent warps a person's entire life. Noah became a farmer and he planted a vineyard, verse 20. He may have planted orchards as well, but the narrative's concern was and is the vineyard. Noah made wine, and the wine made him drunk, and he lay naked within his tent. Some scholars have held that Noah did not know of the character of fermentation and therefore was not aware that the wine would make him drunk. On the other hand, the semi-tropical conditions before the flood would have made wine-making likely. We do not know, moreover, the purpose of the narrative is not to make us hostile to wine or censorious at Noah's drinking to excess. It is a serious misinterpretation to say so. In verse 22, we see the focus. Ham saw his father's drunken, naked condition, and he reported it to his brothers, evidently with satisfaction. Where Noah's wife and others were at the time, we do not know. We do know that Shem and Japheth immediately took a garment, walked backwards, and on seeing Noah's head or feet, covered him at once. Verse 21. When Noah awoke, he knew what had happened, and what his, quote, younger or, more correctly, youngest son had done. Verses 25 to 27 have an important history. They have been used to justify black slavery, to indict the Bible as a racist book, and to attack Christianity as a religion of racial supremacy. The meaning of these verses is usually overlooked, and their relevance to our time is overlooked. First of all, Ham, the guilty party, is not even mentioned. This fact is very important. The curse has a future reference and one that is valid always, so that to limit its scope is an error. Second, the curse is on Canaan. Ham's son, quote, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Verse 25. Ham's punishment is that he will be punished in one of his sons. As a bad son, he received as judgment a bad son. Third, because the family is God's basic institution, the severe judgment for dishonouring a parent comes through the family. This cannot be held always to be true. 
no sin and no what spark merited a ham. This episode was an aspect of a fallen world full of sin on all sides. The judgment of Ham was to have a son like himself. The family is the area of the most painful conflicts because of sin, but is also the area of the richest blessings of grace. Fourth, Noah says, quote, God shall enlarge Japheth, verse 27. The descendants of Japheth became rulers and conquerors. This blessing is for his faithfulness in honouring his father. Fifth, Japheth, quote, shall dwell in the tents of Shem, verse 27. The messianic line of Shem shall provide the true faith for the descendants of Japheth. Quote, the tents of Shem, end quote, represent the heritage of the true faith. The strength of Japheth will thus be the faith. Sixth, quote, and Canaan shall be his servants, verse 27. The rise and fall of men and nations will be in terms of the faith. The Canaanites of history, of whatever race they may be, will end up as the servants of God's people. Whatever their race or colour, the Canaanites, whatever their ancestry, are the enemies of the family and of God's law. Today, both Western quote-unquote white culture and quote-unquote black culture are Canaanites in character, and barring repentance and change, their heritage will be enslavement. Men pass from slavery to sin, into slavery to men. This curse, thus, is valid for all time, and certainly in our era. In verses 28 following, we are told that Noah lived 350 years after the flood for a total of 950 years. The sin of Adam was a contempt for God's authority and a desire to be his own God and law. Ham's contempt for his father was likewise a contempt for authority. Noah's drunkenness simply gave Ham the opportunity to show his contempt openly. The goal of many in every era is to find some pretext whereby they can vindicate their contempt for men in authority. Their justification for themselves consists in calling attention to the real or imaginary sins of others. They are especially full of malice towards those superior to them. The validity of this curse for all time rests in this fact of the continuing hostility of fallen man for all authorities, God himself first of all, and all God-ordained authorities. The world after the flood is marked by this curse because the whole human order, to have any progress, must have godly authority. <laughs>